The type of radio you most often find on the street or in a charity shop is a clock radio. Take this AM FM type for example. In today's video I'll talk about using the parts to make another radio. The type we're most interested cover AM and FM and have a slide rule tuning dial. The inclusion of that means it has a variable capacitor suitable for what we're going to do with it, which is to make a simple AM radio. Here's the major part of the innards of one clock radio and the one that I'm going to pull apart. This was the display that I've already ripped off. This was the display driver, possibly clock chip. And on the left part is the radio section. Most notable is the variable capacitor. We'll definitely need that. And we'll also need the ferrite rod. And that's got a coil on it. It's got wires that are thin and fragile, so just be very careful with it. They're the two main parts we'll need. There are some passive components. Uh, there's a transistor there. This chip here is the radio chip, so almost all its stages are in there. You can see that there's a ceramic resonator filter there and one just behind it. That's 10.7 and 455. The other IC here, you might not be able to read the markings but it's a TDA2822, that's the audio amplifier. A couple of discrete transistors, one just there in the middle of the screen, one just here. These coils here, part of the FM radio bit, we're not using that. This one here is, I think, going to be for the local oscillator for the AM broadcast band. I'm guessing we're not going to use that. The only items in fact we'll use are the variable capacitor and the ferrite rod coil here. Both of these are probably harder and more expensive to get whereas the passive components are very cheap so you can order those online or if you've got a good electronic shop nearby you'll be able to buy those. Underneath the board this is the tuning control the things that stick out there, I think that was part of the dial assembly. This is the volume control. There's a switch here that selects various functions, like if you want the radio on. And apart from that, just the underside, not much else. We need a small Phillips head screwdriver to remove the control from the variable capacitor that allows access to its connections which will carefully desolder. Important not to apply too much heat. And looking at this, there's a screw there so that may also need to be undone. Never ever throw these away. You may need it if you are going to be using the variable capacitor in another project. This is the flight rod and coil that's just come out of the radio. Handle it very carefully as it's delicate. There are three wires coming out. We'll likely only be using two of them in this project. As for the variable capacitor, this connection where my thumb is, there is a wire going from the ferrite rod, so I think we're going to use that. The one in the middle is likely a common or earth, and there's another connection on the far right. Now you might not be able to see it, but there are other connections for the FM part of the capacitor which are lower in value and we won't be using. This is our carefully unsoldered variable capacitor. As you can see there's lots of connections, but we only need two. Here I'm measuring the variable capacitor's value because there's actually several variable capacitors inside here, it's important to get the connections to the correct one. I've turned the spindle to anti-clockwise, which is 
the highest capacitor value and I'm trying connections on various parts of the variable capacitor. This connection here going between the middle and the outer that the ferrite rod was connected to measures about 130 picofarads which is probably the correct one but I'll just try others just in case I can find a higher value and that may be the better one. This one here still the center but the other outer pin is a bit higher nearer 140 picofarad. These others which are on the left hand side this is the side of the variable capacitor nearest the FM coils is a lower value less than 30 picofarad so we don't want to use those Therefore, for this project, which is an AM radio, I'm going to be using these. This will give 140 picofarad. Now we'll just turn it to clockwise, which is our lowest value, and it's 13 picofarad. Generally speaking, you need about a 10 to 1 ratio to cover the AM broadcast band. As for the ferrite coil, if your capacitance meter, like this, does inductance, then you can use that to measure it. But if yours doesn't, then you can just use an ohm meter on the low ohm setting. What we're wanting to find is the resistance between the various wires you might find that if your coil has multiple coils some of them have two then you won't be able to find a circuit between one coil and the other there'll probably be a, a smaller coil and a larger coil and the important thing is to identify the larger coil as that will be the tuning coil for our AM receiver I found that between here and here I got around 13.5 ohm and between here and here around 10 ohm between here and here was around 3 or 4 ohm so I'm going to try first of all 13.5 ohm and if I can't hear stations at the top end of the dial then the inductance is too much and then I'll go for connecting the coil between here and here instead. If you find that you cannot receive stations at the top end of the broadcast band, then you can slide the coil slightly out from the ferrite and that will give you that coverage. Here's a possible circuit. Just add it on to the tuned circuit that you've salvaged from the clock radio. Add some headphones, these can be low impedance, but high impedance would be better. And you should be able to hear local stations just off the ferrite rod antenna. No external antenna needed. If the circuit is familiar, it's very similar to the 12 component transistor radio that I described in a recent video. It's a bit simpler because there isn't a feedback winding and there's no coupling winding into the first transistor stage. So if you are going to build a circuit and you're happy with some extra coil winding then the one I described then is better. But the advantage of this is that there's no coil winding you're just using the coil that you've salvaged from the clock radio and it will work with limitations. For instance, I found that with the feedback, there was actually a bit of feedback, possibly because the wires were long. If you change the spacings, like between the headphone leads and the ferrite rod, you might be able to control the feedback and have it just before the point of oscillation. That's where you'll get best reception. But nevertheless, I picked this circuit as it's incredibly simple, just two NPN transistors, I've specified BC548, but you could use 
almost anything like 2N3904, 2N2222, etc. Handful of resistors, a couple of 100k resistors there, 68 ohm there. A couple of electrolytic capacitors, 47 microfarad, there's two of them needed. And 68 ohm resistor here, 10 nanofarad capacitor there. And as for the battery, well you could just use a 9 volt battery for it. Very simple, not really intended for long distance stuff, but you should be able to hear local stations if there's an AM station reasonably close to you with this. Here is how I've built it. I've just got drawing pins that have been hammered into a block of wood, coated with solder, so you can just solder various parts between them. The salvage variable capacitor is here. The salvage coil is here. It'd be a good idea to lift it a bit above the board and all the other parts are just here. So that's our very simple two transistor radio using parts that you've salvaged from a clock radio or at least the two most important parts, the variable capacitor and the ferrite rod. If you build this let us know how you go and as I mentioned before I suggest upgrading it to the 12 component radio which in many areas will have enough gain to drive a speaker. Every successful QRP outing needs a good antenna. To get some ideas, check out my books, Hand Carried QRP Antennas, and more Hand Carried QRP Antennas. For more information, visit my website, vk3ye.com, or search their titles on Amazon.